Number 53. There is a 250 meter high cliff at Half Dome in Yosemite National Park in California. Suppose a boulder breaks loose from the top of this cliff. How fast will it be going when it strikes the ground? So that's part A. So let's just take a look at that for now. So we have a cliff. All right. The height of the cliff here is going to be uh, 250 meters. Great. Here's the ground below. And a rock is going to break off. Or what does it say? Boulder, rock, whatever. And it's just going to break off, right? So if it just breaks off by itself, we know that the initial velocity here should be equal to zero meters per second. We also know once it breaks off that the acceleration of the uh, rock will be equal to that of the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.80 meters per second squared, right? We also know the displacement that this rock will be uh, traveling, right? It's going to be traveling negative 250 meters. Why negative? Well, because the rock is moving in the negative y direction. Therefore, the displacement will be a negative value. Um, what else do we know here? Uh, well, let's write down some of our unknowns, right? We don't know the total time it'll take, um, nor do we know the final velocity. Okay, but now the question A, remember, is asking us how fast will it be going when it strikes the ground? So we're being asked a question about the final velocity. So what I want to think about is, <clears throat> do I know an equation that relates the final velocity to the initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement? And we do, right? We know that the uh, fourth equation does on the right hand side. So let's write it down. So for A, we know that the final velocity should equal the squared, the initial velocity squared, plus 2 multiplied by the acceleration, then by the displacement. So the final velocity squared will equal the initial, and the initial was 0, right? So 0 squared is obviously 0, plus 2 multiplied by the acceleration of negative 9.80, multiplied by the displacement of negative 250. Okay, so the final velocity squared is 2 times negative 9.8 times then 250. And it, the answer comes out to be positive because of the double negative. So we get 4,900, um, right, a value of 4,900. And it's positive, which should uh, make sense because uh, we have to take the square root of it, so it had to be positive. So now the final velocity here, just taking the square root of that number, should work out to be simply 70, right? So this comes out to be 70. I'll do three significant figures, meters per second. So at this particular point right here, okay, as soon as it hits the ground, um, the velocity at this location will be equal to uh, 70.0 meters per second. Okay, so that's the answer for part A. Now for part B. So let's go, <clears throat> let's get the highlighter. So now it says, uh, assuming a reaction time of 0.3 seconds, how long will a tourist at the bottom have to get out of the way after hearing the sound of the rock breaking loose? Neglecting the height of the tourist, which is negligible, and it tells us that the speed of sound is 335 meters per second. So let's just think about uh, what's going to happen first, essentially, in this uh, in this part B? So let's just draw. I'm going to draw another picture. All right. So <clears throat> so here's the cliff. This is again 250 meters. Okay. The rock breaks off. Right. And the rock is still traveling down at an initial velocity of zero. There's a person down here. Right. Oh my goodness. So there's a person down there, but. Uh, we're going to consider the height to be negligible, so I'm just going to represent this person as a dot, uh, which by chance would be his shape if the rock does hit him. So what I need to now do is <clears throat> I need to now think about what's the what what what's going to happen first. So the rock breaks off, right, and then is the person going to react? Well, no, not yet, right? Because what are they going to react to? They're going to react to the sound, okay. So the, the uh, speed of sound was given. So as soon as the rock breaks loose, the person right at that particular moment in time, the person down here has no idea that the rock has broken loose, assuming that they're not looking up and they can't see it. They're just going to work off of their hearing. So what happens is as soon as this rock breaks off, the clock starts. Okay, the clock starts. T is equal to zero. 
Now, the person down here doesn't hear the rock at time is equal to zero uh, because it takes a certain amount of time for the sound, the sound here, right, the sound waves to reach the person. How long is that time? Well, we can find that out, right? So let's look back. So let's think about the, so let's write this down. So this is the time for the sound and D to reach, to reach person. Okay, so let's write down what we know. We know that the initial, so now remember, this is now for the sound. So I'm not talking about the rock. I know the initial velocity of the rock is zero, but what's the initial velocity of the sound, right? It's either there's no sound or there is sound, okay? It's for simplicity in this problem. So assume that there's no acceleration, right? Gravity doesn't pull down on sound, it's a wave. So assume that the initial velocity of the sound is the 335 meters per second. That means also that the final velocity of that sound, it's not accelerating, right? It's not an object being pulled by gravity. So therefore it should also be 335 meters per second. Again, the acceleration for this would be zero because the sound is not affected by gravity. And um, what else do we know? We, all, we do know the amount, the displacement that this sound has to travel. Now, just thinking about the signs here, remember the velocities are gonna be negative. Okay, the reason why is because the sound is traveling down in the negative y direction. Therefore, the displacement will also be negative. So the, the sound has to travel 250 meters. And now from here, I could probably figure out the time. So now what we want to do is let's see if we can find an equation that gives us the time and that also mentions, you know, the initial and the final and the displacement. And it looks like I can use equation number, I mean, I can use another equation other than this, but I'll use equation number five. So let's write that. So the displacement is equal to one half times the initial velocity plus the final velocity multiplied by time. So the displacement, as I mentioned before, was negative 250 equals one half multiplied by the initial velocity, which was negative 335 minus another 335, then multiplied by, whoop, then multiplied by time. So this is negative 250. Adding those two numbers together, the negative 335 times a half should just be itself, 335 t. And notice, because of all the signs, it's going to turn out to be positive, which we should anticipate. So the time value here is not totally insignificant, so it actually will make a little difference. So this is 250 divided by 335. So, okay, so it takes 0.746 seconds. Okay. So it takes 7, 0.746, or about three quarters of a second, in order for the person down here to even hear the sound, okay? So right now, the rock, where's the rock then in reality? So the rock probably moved down to here somewhere now, right? It definitely moved downwards. I mean, the rock fell. The person just didn't know it until he heard the sound. So now the rock is not at its original starting point. It's some point below that, Okay. How far below? Well, we could find that if we needed to, right? Um, but not not yet because this is just the, the time that we found is just the time um, that it took for the sound wave to reach the person. Now, remember, that's not the time that the person is going to perceive the sound. How do I know that? Because it says assuming a reaction time. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. That is the time that the a uh, person will perceive the sound, but they're not going to react yet. Okay, so they might hear it and they might take a fraction of a second to figure out what to do. All right, so that's what I'm most concerned about. How much time does this person, as the question's asking, how much time does this person have to move out of the way? Okay, so not only is does he need to wait to hear the sound, but he's also going to have to react to the sound. Okay. So, the time now, so how much time has elapsed from the start, okay, in order uh, before this person can even react? So, that, so let me say, it, let me give you a little formula here. So, let's say the time until, let's say, until, uh, until I can't even spell. That's why I tutor. <laughs> 
That's why I teach uh, physics and math and science. So the time until he can move, all right, should be equal to the time that the sound takes to get to him plus the reaction time. That should make sense, right? So the time until he can move, I'll say until um, is equal to then the time that it took for the sound to reach him, which we just found to be 0.746, plus then his own reaction time, which is gonna take a little over a quarter of a second. So the time until he's able to do something or until he's able to move should be equal to 0.746 uh, plus 0.3. So that should be equal to 1.0400 uh, 0, 4, 0, 4, seconds. So now already the rock now has moved even a little bit further. Maybe it's moved now down here. So right now the rock is somewhere, somewhere in this second part. Okay, so let's just assume the rock is here now. And now finally the person down here, let me just erase the, uh, just erase that little box around them. So finally now the person down here is finally detecting, not only detecting the sound, but he's also gonna now be able to move. Okay, it's not until, it's not until the time of a little over a second has passed until he's able to move. So the time it took to go from the rock breaking off, right, to now when he finally is able to move, this time in between here was, and let me, let me just erase this part, not to make it too messy here. So the time it took is going to be 1.046 seconds. Okay, so now the question is, Again, let's think about the question, uh, how long will the tourists at the bottom have to get out of the way? Well, in order for me to find that, essentially what I'm trying to find now is I'm trying to find the time, right, between, so the time from this point right here until it hits them. So what is the time value? What is this time? How can we solve it? Now, there's a bunch of ways to do this. But I think the easiest way would be, since I already found this time, the easiest way to do it would be now to focus in on finding the total time from the top all the way down to the bottom. Because then if I can find that whole time or that total time until it gets to the bottom, then to find this little piece of it, I could just subtract this on out. Okay? So that's my, sh that's my shift now. So now what I'm going to do is now I'm gonna shift my uh, focus here to finding the total time, I'll call it total time for um, rock or boulder, whatever it is, to hit the ground. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, remember the frame of the problem is now here's the start at the top in terms of the picture, take a look guys, and here's now the bottom. So the initial is up here, Right, and my final values are down here. Okay, so let's state some knowns and unknowns about those two positions. So I know that the rock, the initial velocity of the rock is zero meters per second. I know the rock is in free fall, so therefore it's negative 9.80 meters per second squared. What else do we know? We know that the rock has to travel a distance of negative 250 meters. Okay, you gotta keep the sign, take the sign into account there. What else do we know about those frames uh, we also do know the final velocity, right? Because we just calculated it over there. So we do know the final velocity of this boulder is going to be negative 70 um, point zero. Actually, oh, I, I realized I forgot to put in the 70, negative. Oops. So this has to be negative here. Why is it negative? So, oh man, I say this all the time. Anytime you take a square root, see, even you can even repeat it all the time and still you may forget. So anytime you take a square root, it's always positive and negative. Which value are we gonna take? We're gonna take the negative one. Why? Because the object is traveling in the negative y direction. So this answer should be negative there, technically. Okay, so anyway, I fixed that. Um, that's always the benefit of looking back and I gotta put a little negative there in my other answer. Okay, so, all right, so we got that. Not to get too distracted, so where are we now? And right, we're trying to find the total time here. So the time is the question mark.
So what we want to think about is we want to think, do we know some variables that relate these uh, things together? And I'm actually going to choose because maybe I made a mistake in calculating my final velocity. I'm sure I didn't, but maybe I did. So I don't want to include that in my calculations here because all of these other values were given to me that I just boxed. So let's look at a formula that might relate those four together. So as to minimize the chance of errors propagating throughout your work. So I just box something at the top. All right, it's going to be this equation that we're going to want to use. So let's write it down. So change in x is equal to vit plus 1 half at squared. What's the displacement? Negative 250. The initial velocity was 0, so that whole thing goes to 0. Plus 1 half of negative 9.80 multiplied them by the time squared. That's what I'm trying to find. So it's negative 250 is equal to negative 4.90t squared. Just divide out the negative 4.90, divide out the negative 4.90, and now the t squared is equal to, so take out the calculator, 250 divided by 4.9. The answer is going to be positive, so it works out to be 51.0, 51.0. Now take the square root of both. So the time here is going to be, so second square root of 51, 7.14. So 7.14 seconds. Now here's the thing, this is the total time. Okay, that it will take for the rock, the boulder, to go from the top up here all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so now, um, so now that we know that total time, remember the formula I mentioned before. I'm going to go to the upper left-hand corner. Right, that the total time it takes for the rock to fall will be equal to the time it takes for the person until he's able to move, right, that we just found in the prior part, plus the time it takes to then hit him. Okay, that should make sense. Those are the two parts. So the total time we just found was going to be 7.14 seconds. The time it takes until he's able to move between by the time he hears the sound and then by the time he's able to react was found to be 1.046 seconds, right? Yep. And... Now I'm finding the time it's going to take before it hits him. Okay, so all I got to do is subtract this out as I was mentioning before, minus the 1.046. So when we do that, the time it takes until it's going to hit him, okay, would be 7.14 minus 1.046. So 6.09, and I have to stop it there at three sig figs, 6.09 seconds. So this would be the uh, time he has, right? Time he has time to get out of the way. A lot of these problems deal with boulders falling on people. Um, but anyway, um, so hope this helped, guys. A um, lot of parts of this problem, and part B was a little more difficult because there's a lot of pieces. But remember, the important part here is in terms of framing it. Think about the different parts of the problem. Think about the different objects you're solving for and always try to be consistent. All right, thanks for tuning in. Um, if, if you'd like, please subscribe. That would be awesome. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.